Hi guys, Darren from Venom Fluid Art. Welcome to the Fluid Art Express. Okay, today we're going to have me, obviously. <laughs> then we'll have, after me, Creations by Christy. Shan B Fluid Art. Bubbles from Venom Fluid Art. And the Hippie Dippy Painter Man. So... Stay on board, take the ride with us. I'll be putting links in the chat so everyone can follow every station as we go. All right, let's get into it. So today, I'm just gonna have a bit of a play. So what I've got here is a cradled round, six inch, closer to seven, that I've homemade. So that's an MDF ring with marine ply on top. I'm going to grab some pillow paint, which is British Paint Slow Sheen. Put some of that down. Do, 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 do. So what I like to do is put a big blob down like that to start with. Then I will spin it out. Stick my finger on the edge like that. So it wets all the edge. That way, when we spin it out later on, the paint will go across the top and then down the sides rather than flicking everywhere. All right, pop this one up. There we go. All right, what I am going to do today is just have a little bit of fun. So I'll be doing a swipe and then turn it into a bloom just for giggles. We'll see how that turns out. So we'll start with some color. This is a phalo blue by Amsterdam that I have added micro pearl to and some pearl white, some interference blue and some interference violet too. So we'll start with that down here. Yeah, a lot of that should spin off anyway, so it will cover it. Okay, what other colours should we use? We'll use a lighter blue. So I'll put that there. Add a little bit here and there. Go for a lighter blue again. Little dribbles here and there. What else shall we use? I think we might go with a really bright pink. Now that there is a neon that I've mixed um, pearl white into. So you get a bit of bling when it hits the light. This one is a red from eye candy. That I've messed around with as well. That's got interference colours in it and things like that. Put 
99% of the colors that I use, I mess around with. So, not much is standard. Except for this one. It's Bubblegum by Black Diamond. I absolutely love it. The color it is, straight out of the pack. So, add some of that down. Go with a purple, which is a Montmartre color, which is pearl purple, and I've added a little bit of dioxazine purple in it, just to give it a bit of a darker color. So I have the purple. else do we have here? This one's Lemon Sorbet by this little piggy. Some of that there. A little bit through here. Then I have Interference Pigments. So Interference Pigments look white like that but when they hit the light that will actually turn to a gold color don't know whether the camera will pick it up so you see the gold shimmer in that that's where your interference pigments do so we'll add some up here Work best on a black background, but if you have them on a white background, they sort of ghost shimmer for you. When you tilt it in the light, you'll be able to see them pop. We'll go with an interference violet. Across here. Okay, I'm not even going to pop the bubbles because I want any bubbles that pop after I swipe it to chop and change colours. So we'll leave it at that. I will grab my swipe tool. Okay. So that's my little swipe tool. I'm going to put some cell activator on it. Now that's a chameleon cell activator that I've got. If you want to see how I made it, I'll pop it up on the screen now. So what I'm going to do is leave that on quite thick. Or like two or three times more than what you'd usually put on. So I'm going to go across the bottom section here. Like that. Now you'll see how long it takes for the cells to pop up because there's so much cell activator there. Which is what I want it to do. Then I will grab my little swipe tool and we'll put some Amsterdam white on it. Mix with Australian flow troll. going to go across through there. So you notice where the most cell activator is when you first put it down. It's still really thick and as it gets thinner as you go, more cells pop up. It's easier for it to sink through. 
So what we're going to do is grab our little mini blower and blow it out. like that. Then what I'm going to do is grab a torch, pop any bubbles that are in it now, don't get too close, keep it moving all the time otherwise you'll burn the paint. Grab our little skewer. Grab a new one. Okay. I'm just going to put some patterns through it. Like that. Then I think we'll take it for a little bit of a spin and see what happens. Pop that up there. So we'll go for the center of the spinner or as close as we can get. that way just go slow Okay, pop that one up and have a little look. See if I could find my little swipe tool I just used, there it is. Alright, so pop that one up, grab the cup. Always scrape the bottom. Now's a good time if you want to add any other little bits and pieces into it, is the time to do it. Okay. So, what we end up is, with that. That's sort of a bloom on the bottom and 
a scoop and drag without actually scooping and dragging it. Get very similar results. So those interference colours will really pop when the light hits them. So what I'll do is take a another little video with it all lit up so you can actually see it a lot better. And it should pop up now. So yeah, how much fun are those to do? Alright, I might press pause here and I'll just do something random for you. Back in a sec. Okay, we're back. This one's an 8 inch cradle drown that I've made up. Um, British paint slashing, pillow paints down. But what I've done is spin it out. So it's totally spun out, so there's no movement in it whatsoever. What I'm going to do is show you an easy way of doing a bloom when you're a beginner. So if your pillow paint's already spun out, um, there's less chance of hitting the pillow paint when you blow it out, where you get all the white through it and it drives you nuts. So rather than blowing through a pillow all the time, if you spin your pillow out first, there's less chance of dragging the white up into it. So, we'll just start throwing some colours down. I'll just pick randoms. So that was the phalo blue. This is the pearl purple. Might go with a blinged up magenta. It's actually got um, a metallic silver mixed in with it, just to give it a bit more of a sparkle when it hits the light. We'll go with our bubblegum pink, so I love it. Go with our neon pink again. Like that. And I think that will do. We'll grab our black cell activator again. I'm not even going to pop the bubbles because we're doing a bloom, it really doesn't matter. Not when you're blowing it out. So we'll put one scoop, two scoops, three scoops of that. Get the mini blower. Start off in the center, and just start fluffing it out. A little bit by a little bit. Try and keep your colours as close to the centre as possible. 
when you put them down. That way it's a lot more even than what I've just done. Oops. Alright, we'll grab a straw. Just give this sand a bit of a little bit of a blow. So all you're doing is breaking the surface tension there so that everything can pop up. Now is a good time to use your torch to blow it or pop the bubbles with your skewer, entirely up to you. I use the torch because it's easy. Another thing is with the torch, if it doesn't light first go, you can just use the gas that comes out to actually pop the bubbles. That way there's no heat. It still pops your bubbles. Don't breathe it in though. It's not good for you. All right. So what I'll do is I'll grab my skewer now. Do a few little modifications. Now, Cool trick for a skewer. If you keep your skewer totally perpendicular to it, you won't drag white into it. So you want it directly straight up and down and you won't get white pillow paint through your design. As soon as you start to tilt it on an angle like that, as you drag through, it's going to bring pillow paint up like a little snow plow all through your design. So just keep that in mind when you do it. If you don't want white bits through it, keep it straight up and down. So always wipe every time. Another cool trick is if you have your skewer in, give it a tap before you lift up. And you won't get stringy bits of paint that float around. doing is dragging through. Now that skewer is actually touching the board when I drag that through. So we do is put some patterns through. Now remember this is going to spin out anyway so we're going to get a lot of the movement and things are going to change we might lose some of this design we might not who knows so all I'm doing is just dragging through wipe every time you go through Otherwise you start mixing different colors in to your white when you first dip in. So I'll say, I'll do it here where I know it's gonna spin off. So if I drag that in and then go back here and dip in, it'll leave a blue trail there. That's where I haven't cleaned the tip off. Mm. 
Now, if you don't want that blue mark there, you can either just tap on it and it will disappear or drag your design through and make it a feature part of it. Okay, so that's what we're starting off with. And nowhere have we hit the pillow, just because it was so thin. So we'll give that a spin. Wipe my hands. All right, so if I move that off center a little bit, I can get everything to move this way a little. Just give it light spins to start with, so you can see where things are moving. Like that. Bit more of a spin. further that way a little bit more so it runs down the side a little bit this is the cool thing about using cradle boards especially thick ones your design runs down the side of it and gives you a little bit more of a cool look to it. So I'll pop this one up. What I'll do is give it a scrape first. Like that. Okay. So See how you get cool edges where your designs run down the side. Pretty. And there you go. One really sexy bloom. Without hitting pillow paint. Definitely makes it a lot easier for beginners. Spin your pillow paint out first, just add more colour and you're going to get stuff like that. Alright guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Please hit like, share and subscribe, ring that notification bell. That way you get to see all my videos as I release them. Up next we've got Christy from Creations by Christy. So, just click on her name in the title, that'll take you to her channel. Or if you're in the live chat with us, just click the links that I'm putting in there and you'll be able to follow the Fluid Art Express all the way through for the rest of everybody else. Alright guys, thank you for joining us, have fun, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.